Hello, I'm Bruce from New England Solar Hot Water. We're an installer of the Smart Solar Solar Assisted Heat Pump Water Heater. The main advantage of this system is that the uh, heat pump evaporator is outside. This panel is an evaporator. Uh, and, that, and that eliminates the need to steal heat from indoors to run a conventional hybrid uh, heat pump water heater. So if you're gonna have your evaporator outside, uh, the question is, well, how does it work in the cold? Um, I'm in Massachusetts and, uh, and it's cold. It, it, says, it says 20 degrees, give or take. Um, you can't see it, but it just snowed eight inches last night. There's no sun on the panel, yet we're making hot water. Um, this panel works three ways. It works by convection, which means that uh, uh, the refrigerant, and the inlet refrigerant right now is very cold. It's probably uh, negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Refrigerant goes to this panel, and by convection, it picks up heat, so to speak, from the, even though it's 20 degrees out, uh, you know, that 20 degrees from the perspective of negative 25 degree Fahrenheit refrigerant is actually quite warm. I'm standing next to it. You probably can't hear it in the video, but this is sizzling. What that sizzling is, uh, the noise, uh, what, the, what that noise is, it's the liquid refrigerant going into the panel and flashing off into the vapor. It's boiling, essentially. Um, three ways this uh, creates heat. That was the first way. The second way is by, uh, by phase change. This frost on here means that the panel uh, has taken water vapor out of the air. Water vapor is relatively uh, high energy um, and has gone from uh, a gaseous phase uh, water vapor is a gas gone to a solid phase frost in the process of doing that 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 liquid excuse me That gaseous water vapor gives up a large amount of energy Which of course is, 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 is sent to the refrigerant as it makes its way through the panel The third way this panel uh, collects energy is by sunlight right now. There, there's no Sun We're under a little porch area in the, in the summer this has Sun But in the dead of winter uh, there you know, there's, there's seldom Sun on this panel uh, if, if at all um, Yet we're making hot water. How much hot water? Well, not a lot. Um, we're at the low end of the um, smart solar operating range. This thing right now is probably making 900 watts. But 900 watts is not, is not a lot. Um, a typical family of four uses 10 kW of, of heating power uh, every day for making hot water. So that means that 900 watts, and if these conditions were constant throughout the day, that compressor on the heat pump on the other side of this wall with the storage tank would have to run for 11 hours. And that's fine, that compressor can run, it can run for 24 hours. We have nine systems at a commercial property near here in Worcester, Massachusetts, where the compressors have been running nonstop since we installed them quite a while ago. So in crummy conditions, uh, the smart solar system isn't making, the capacity is not great, 900 watts again. All that means is that the compressor has to run longer to heat up the tank and smart solar tanks are very large. Uh, the tank inside is, is 80 gallons, but we, we go to 120 gallons. So in the summer, um, this thing gonna, is gonna work a lot better. Instead of 900 watts, it might be three times as much might be 2,700 watts, and the coefficient of performance will go to, from about two, which is what we have right now, to up to four, or maybe four and a half, or even five, if conditions are perfect in the summer. Um, this thing wants humidity, it wants sunlight, and it wants uh, moving air. We don't really have much of any of those today, but nonetheless, you know, it's working in, in, in the household, obviously, it's not going to run out of hot water. Um, rather than having an evaporator outside, you, you might ask, uh, why not just have a conventional hybrid water heater inside? On the other side of this wall is a garage, but it could just easily be a basement. And it's what the energy nerds would call a semi-conditioned space, which means it's kept at 55 or 60 degrees. So if you have a conventional hybrid uh, heat pump water heater and the nameplate coefficient of performance of that might be 3.5 or might even be four. However, that's at a very specific test condition. What that test condition means relatively high humidity, 50%. Heat pumps like humidity, it, it increases their output and 67 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means as soon as you take that indoor heat pump and put it inside where there's very little humidity and 55 or 60 degree air, you're not getting that high coefficient performance. You're getting something else. You're getting 2.5 or something like that, right? It'll vary tremendously depending on a variety of conditions. Not only that, in this particular house, that garage, you know, it's, it's kept warm such as it is, again, only 55 or 60 because there's an oil-fired uh, oil hydronic unit heater in, in the ceiling. So it's blowing hot air. Um, it's blowing hot air to heat the space and that hot air comes from an oil boiler. Well, if you run that heat pump inside, it's going to cool the space and that oil boiler is going to come on. So A, you're not getting the nameplate coefficient of performance if you put a conventional hybrid water heater on the other side of this wall. And B, there's a hidden cost because it's consuming oil that's, that's heated by a boiler. Um, and the situation's even worse if you're heating that semi-conditioned space by, um, by a head unit for a mini split, right? In that case, you're taking uh, air that's warm by electricity and uh, it has a cost associated with it and you're using that air to, to run your heat pump and the coefficient performance and the expense of operating that, that heat pump is, is, is even greater. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's a good uh, summary of, of how this thing works in, in the cold. 
Um, th there'll be more videos. Uh, we're going to get into the economics of how these work. Uh, if you found this uh, video useful, uh, please hit like. Thank you very much.